Sooner Scoop HD. Yeah, I, again, uh, reiterate, thank you for coming. Um, the last time we got to see each other, we were playing for the national championship. And it didn't go so well. We got second place. It's part of what we do. Um, fought hard all year long last year, but that was last year. Moving forward to this year, a lot of new faces uh, throughout the fall. It was a lot of new ventures throughout the fall. We had to teach a lot of new things, teach our culture, teach uh, the fundamentals, and then we're moving into the spring. Spring's been pretty good besides the weather. We can't control the weather. Um, hopefully, uh, uh, next time the groundhog comes out, he'll stay out a while. I was thinking about shooting him and leave him out there, but uh, uh, it, you know, it's one of those deals, and we have to deal with it in baseball, which is fun. Um, like I said, there's a lot of new faces. I think we've have uh, uh, lost our whole starting rotation. Um, really, uh, the, it's been that's been a really a fun deal going through that process and, and uh, uh, dealing with that every day, making sure that they understand what our expectations are, what our fundamentals are as we go through it from the pitching side of it. I think our defense is intact. We have four young men that are coming back that started a lot for us last year, defensively and offensively. And uh, um, I think those guys and their leadership throughout the fall going into the spring will help our young guys and our new guys that are transfers in help them with the expectations and how they go about their business on a daily basis, whether it's uh, uh, working early, working late, uh, working extra, uh, working harder, taking more of a purpose in what they do. Uh, we've seen that uh, uh, leadership from those four young men that you'll get to talk to after this. Um, all in all, I think the spring's going to be fun. Looking for the opportunity uh, to play a lot of good teams. Uh, looking for the opportunity to play in the Big 12. Our, the Big 12 schedule's really tough. Our schedule's really tough. Um, that's what we try to do moving forward as we go through it. We try to put a schedule together that's going to uh, prepare us for a regional tournament or super regional or Omaha. So uh, uh, being that said, do you guys have any questions? Oh, you know, Skip, for two straight years, you know, in Major League Baseball has drafted your entire pitching staff, or starting staff. So this is what you guys always do. You always rebuild your staff. Talk about the guys or the next generation of great starters you're going to have. Well, we have a couple of freshmen that have been really good. Uh, um, Carson Turnquist and Julian Hatchum. Um, you know, you look at Julian Hatchum, he's a 6'8 left-handed pitcher. A lot like Bennett, you know. Uh, um, High three-quarter arm slot, um, really competitive. That's what we've kind of seen out of him. Carson Turnquist, on the other hand, um, he came in injured from high school, and sometimes you have to deal with that as we go through it. And uh, um, what he's done is he's really a kid that works extremely hard. And I think that's the leadership of the guy, the pitchers that we've had that were coming back from last year, Calhoun, Carmichael, and those guys have done a good job of making sure they understand, you know, hey, they got to learn about me as a pitching coach and as a head coach also. And so those older guys can, you know, help them in that uh, aspect. So I, I think uh, uh, those are two of the guys that, you, that you're going to see a lot of. M this year, in, in sparks. I mean, pitching has changed so much in baseball period. I mean, I, don't, I saw a stat the other day with Bob uh, Gibson, and he threw 335 innings. I mean, it was, with a 1.12 ERA, you're just not going to see that anymore. And I, I just don't know if you're going to see any 300-game winners anymore. Uh, they're throwing three and four and five innings, and basically that's kind of what we did halfway through the year, even though our starters were posting five to seven innings every time they walked out there. And uh, we're trying to go with matchups and uh, uh, through the bullpen as we go through it. So you'll see that a lot more in, in college baseball, um, and it filtered down from Major League Baseball. You mentioned all the new faces and all you've got to replace, especially just in the rotation of the bullpen. How do you see, at least to, to start off, it might evolve things shaping up in terms of the rotation or who's going to start in the pen? 
Uh, you know, right now, you look at Kel Davis. He's transferred from Oklahoma State. Uh, uh, he threw in their bullpen last year. Um, we'll probably start him. Uh, we have a transfer from McLennan Junior College in Waco uh, uh, named Will Karsten. And then, you know, right now, we really don't know who's going to go on Sunday. It could be Braxton Dalfit, who's a transfer from Lamar. It could be Jamie Hitt, a transfer from Texas Tech. Uh, and then kind of going in the midweeks, it could be Julian uh, Hatcham, freshman. Uh, it could be Carson Turnquist, a freshman. Which we, usually that's what we've kind of done is on those Tuesday games, we've thrown freshmen um, and try to develop those guys. And I don't know if you guys understand it or not, and you see it, you look at uh, uh, college baseball, you have to win every game. You're, you want to win every game. It's hard to develop those young men. I mean, you look back at, like, what has Jake Bennett done? I said it a lot last year. He was kind of the poster child of what we did. He came in out of high school. He threw every Tuesday, and he got a little bit better than COVID hit. And the, the, uh, his second year, he threw every Sunday. And then last year, he threw every Friday. And so you see, he was kind of what we do with the freshman pitchers. And we try to do as much as possible is continue to develop on those guys in a system that's really not conducive to development. It's more about winning. And we're really about development. I mean, you see it. I mean, you, that's why we're losing three starting pitchers to Major League Baseball, because it's about development. And uh, um, that's what we talk about a lot. So Spider and Nicholas and Clark were all freshmen last year. And they made their mark for sure. Now they're coming back as leaders on this team. So can you talk about that transition and how you've seen them step up? Well, they understood the work. I mean, um, we've said this, uh, uh, what mark do you want to leave on a program? We talk about that in our culture uh, as we go through it. You know, the, the players that's played here in the past, uh, uh, they left that mark for us. And our job going forward is to leave that mark on other players. And uh, uh, they've done a great job. Even though they're freshmen and, and they're sophomores actually uh, uh, going forward, they've got to leave that mark on other players. Like, this is how we go about our business. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. We're going to act like this. We're going to dress like this. Just think if the Army uh, didn't have discipline. All they, were, all they would be is just a man in, in the same uniform. You got to have discipline. You got to have those things that are that are really big. And I think those guys share those same qualities. It's hard getting used to it first, but after after a while, it becomes a part of who they are, and they can leave that mark on the the kid that's sitting in the same room with them, the same locker room that they're hitting with, they're, they're lifting with, all those all those things. The leadership that they've shown has been incredible. Last, last year, Spikerman was hurt early on in the year. What's going to do for him to have a year in the program uh, to develop and stuff like Well, that? I mean, you look at our that's, – that's what our training staff and our uh, – uh, um, strength coach and our training staff, Luke and Tim Overman, Luke Spitt, our trainer, they, they set them a system. They understand what – his downfalls are, they understand what his biomechanics are of his body, how it works, and, and uh, try to get him a system of routines of stretching, rolling out, uh, to get him, to keep him healthy going on the field every day. And it also, you know, what's awesome about our baseball team this year, there's a lot of guys that can play a lot of different positions. Like we moved uh, uh, Wallace Clark from third base behind the plate. I mean, Spikerman's even played shortstop in inner squad. So, a baseball player is a baseball player. A baseball player can he can walk out there, he can pitch that day, he can play shortstop, he can, he can. That's what we want as baseball players. Kendall Pettis is a guy who really hit his stride uh, last postseason. You mentioned development. Just what have you seen out of him in terms of growth, adding to his game? I think what Kendall's done is. Uh, uh, He's gotten more accustomed to learning who he is and what he's about and his identity. Like if he gets on base, he can create havoc. I mean, he can't sit up there and just try to hit bomb after bomb. He's, I think those things are going to come the more experience that he has of showing his identity. we got to get him on base because he's a great base runner and he can create havoc on bases. So we've got to, he's got to be really good at the bunt game. He's got to be really good at uh, uh, taking his walks. He's got to be really good at hitting as well. But offense and hitting are totally two different things. And I think the thing that uh, Kendall, he's, a, he's an elite outfielder, elite left fielder, and I think th those things are uh, 
his defense has got to be just as important as his offense. With so many new faces, what does it do for you to have guys like Kendall back and Diego back, guys who have been in this program a well, long time? I think anytime you get a guy back, it shows you what your program's about. I mean, you built a relationship with them. You've been, you know, you've been on the road with them. You, you've loved with them. You've cried with them. You've, you chewed their butt out. You've uh, uh, watched them feel sorry for themselves. All those little things, that's relationship building. And you, the more you get to see, no different than seeing our guys come back from last year. And, and you know, like the other night, I was watching uh, um, the last three innings in Blacksburg, watching Trevin Michael, and he came in the next day. And I was like, wow, this guy was pretty good, you know. And uh, you really didn't realize that until you get to really just sit back and watch and reflect on what he did. And uh, um, I think it's about relationships for us and our program. And that's our culture more than anything. It's a family atmosphere. We're not afraid to uh, chew one of them's butt out. We're not afraid to hug them. We're not afraid to get excited about what's going on, um, you know. Win or lose. It, and, and really, uh, to tell you the truth, it's not about winning or losing. It's about how you develop those people as young men. If they, they leave here and be good fathers and husbands and, and they move on to professional baseball, you know, like watching Kate Horton uh, leave and him texting me last week a quote about pitching. You know, that's what it's really about at the end of the day. And, uh, uh, yeah, do I want to win a national championship? There ain't no doubt. I, I, that, that burns a hole in my soul every time I go out to practice. I mean, I'm focused on doing that. What has the process been like replacing Trevin on the back end? And what's the back end of the bullpen going to look like just in general? Well, uh, uh, there's been a lot of prayer. And uh, uh, it's, it, it's going to be like com by committee right now. I mean, you've you got to be able to hold runners. You got to be able to throw strikes with two pitches, and you got to be able to field your position. And the, those guys are going to be able to do that. Like I said, we're going to look at the uh, the matchup as we go through it, you know. And we've got two or three guys that that can do that, that can throw both sides of the matchup, right versus left. And so you really have to look at that as you go through it. And and then once once you establish that, they kind of get confidence. You know, they're sitting in uh, biology lab at at. 11 o'clock or they're sitting in government and they're going, you know what, I might get to throw the sixth or the seventh inning. That's where that starts. They don't have that opportunity. You know what, I'm going to go roll out that morning. I'm going to eat breakfast. I'm going to stretch a little bit, you know, like in pro ball. They got to go to class. Then they might have to go to study hall. But if they think they're going to throw the sixth or seventh inning, that's kind of where it starts. Like, hey, their mind starts getting ready right there and it gets them excited. Then they get to the field and they do their stuff to get ready and prepare to play that uh, to pitch or play that night. It's the same thing with an everyday player. Coach uh, um, Bryce Madron's guy you brought in, big Juco guy, getting a lot of hype. Just uh, how'd you go about recruiting him and bringing him in and just evaluate what you've seen from him so far? Well, we watched Bryce out of high school. He's from Blanchard. Uh, Oklahoma great baseball program. I mean, they win state two or three times uh, out of the last four or five years. And uh, um, we watched him go, watched him grow as a player at Cali County. He's one of the best junior college programs in the country as well. They go to the World Series every year. And he's, gonna, he's a dynamic player in a, in a small package. And uh, uh, he's exciting to uh, see if uh, – I would challenge you guys. I think he played for uh, uh, some summer league team. It's fun watching him and Reggie uh, uh, Reggie get on him about wearing uh, a kilt. And uh, I think it was the Savannah Bananas or something like that. And Reggie was uh, uh, kind of – it's pretty – he's got a great personality. He's dynamic. He's a good player. Uh, he's got a surrounding with players that are just like it. I mean, he's really competitive. He'll get after it. I mean, he's not a guy that's not going to back away uh, from being aggressive, and that's what's that's what it, that's what our program's about. I think another new guy that got people pretty excited in the fall and leading up has been Patrick. You know, Hank Scoff. Just what kind of addition is he to the team? What kind of an impact can he have? Well, that's uh, being that said, uh, Josh. I mean, you look at you pull for that guy every day. This guy didn't have a scholarship out of high school. His uh, grandfather was a coach here before with uh, uh, Coach Cochelle. And uh, uh, he, he had some junior college offers. He wanted to walk on at the University of Oklahoma. And uh, he's done a great job. 
an incredible job as he goes about his business. He's really athletic. He's really aggressive. Are there going to be some hiccups? Absolutely. There's no doubt about that. But it that's really who you want your your kid to be. I mean, he he doesn't take anything for granted. Every day he walks by the lounge. He says hello. Uh, he goes out there. He's really aggressive. He's. I'd rather tell him to woe than giddy up. That's what you got to tell him because he's going to go so hard sometimes it's reckless. And you got to tell him to, hey, whoa, slow down a little bit, start seeing the baseball. And uh, uh, it's been really fun to watch him grow through the fall and the spring. And I think our older guys have done a great job with him as far as uh, uh, taking extra ground balls, understanding, like, you know, because we can only be with them a certain amount of time. And so, you know, getting Dakota Harris, our shortstop, he works extremely hard. He's really mature for a junior in college. He's married. He's, uh, uh, you know, so he, he spends a lot of extra work, and, and those guys really work, on, work together. It's been fun to see that leadership of those guys taking extra ground balls or, you know, uh, uh, picking Coach Raley's uh, uh, brain about uh, uh, defense. With, with Kale, obviously you didn't have to go very far to, to find him. Where did your familiarity with him begin? Obviously he's local out of high school and was only up in Stillwater. He played in our Wednesday night league, our camp league. He was a catcher. We were like the first ones to get him to start pitching. You know, and uh, uh, that's what's incredible. And when he, when we offered him a scholarship out of high school, I called him and he called me and said, hey, I'm going to Oklahoma State. I said, if you ever need anything, give me a call. And not like... You know, I'm not going to say anything else because that's what you, yeah, it's how you treat kids. It's how you treat people. And, uh, um, you know, he got on the portal and all of a sudden he calls and says, hey, I remember what you told me. Can I meet with you today in your office? I said, absolutely. And that's how that deal happened. What most impressed you about his evolution as a pitcher from when you saw him playing catcher all the way to when he showed back up here? His will. He had a lot of will. I mean, one night uh, we'd beat, beat them on a Friday night and beat them on a Saturday, and he willed his team to beat us on a Sunday. He has a strong, strong will, and sometimes he forgets about that as well. So he has that will. I mean, you pitch with your head and your heart, and he pitches with his heart. When he, when he stays with his heart, he's really good. When he starts pitching with his head, he's just okay. When he pitches with his heart, he really means it. I mean, he's uh, really competitive. Uh, Coach, obviously uh, one of the biggest replacements is uh, trying to find a replacement for Jimmy Crooks. Can you kind of talk about how that position battle with catcher is progressing and, you know, who might uh, see the majority of the reps uh, this spring? Yeah, Easton Carmichael's a freshman. He's going to go up through up and downs as we go through this. Um, he'll get some playing time. We move Wally. Um, uh, Wallace Clark behind the plate. He's only been doing it a month. There's going to be some transition. There's going to be some ups and downs with it. He's done a great job. Um, we think that fits his identity moving forward as a professional player. So we want to give that to him and, and, and kind of get that taste in his mouth. Um, and I think he could do it at a high level. I think Easton will be a catcher at a high level. You'll see him get better and better. Uh, we got a transfer from BYU named Mason Strong that played, he's a tough kid, he played with a broke thumb all, all fall. And we really didn't know it till the end. I mean, it bothered him. And so he had surgery. He's just now getting back. I think his first game uh, to play an inner squad because um, it broke his right thumb was just yesterday. So it'll transition as we go through. And, and you can always use Diego. Diego can play anywhere on the baseball field. That's what's so awesome about Diego is he, he, uh, he can play anywhere on the baseball field. He's, he's really enthusiastic. He uh, gets after it. I mean, you know, I always talk about you need that one guy that's our, your spiritual leader. I think he's one of them. Like yesterday, we're sitting there, and it's cold. I mean, it was cold. And, and I'm like, uh, uh, he catches the first three or four innings and he's not saying anything. I'm like, what? So he gets done and goes over. And what, what, what's, what's going on with you, man? I mean, that's, that, you know, he, you, you got to be consistent. And he has been really consistent. No, who knows what happened yesterday, but that's the thing. I think he's one of our spiritual leaders, and I think he's going to continue to do that. And plus, he graduated in December. I mean, that makes me ecstatic. You've done something in your life as a coach. That kid graduated. Sooner Scoop HD.